Hey guys, it's Callum. And Meg from the Outback Nomads. Thought you'd give us a bit of an insight to about us a bit, I guess. How we started out and what we did before we started travelling Australia full time. So previously I was an electrician back in Brisbane, um, working on the Cross River Rail. Um, started there, site set up and rode the tunnel boring machine and finished up there and at that time COVID was, was full in place so work was the only thing we could do. Um, so once borders started opening up, everything started coming back to normality. We thought, bugger it, it's time to go. So pulled the pin from work and packed up and hit the road. I was a manager at Coles, worked for the company for 13 odd years. Finally time to take me long service and hit the open road. Here we are. Yeah. So we left on the 1st of August. 1st of August 2022. we left. 2022. We left Brisbane. We were uh, ecstatic and couldn't wait. So we decided to punch down the east coast. Mind you, we were in the camper trailer. Yeah, so that's right. So at the start, we had a camper trailer. And we had the boat on top of the camper trailer, which we thought was a ripper of an idea. Oh, yeah. Turns out it's a bit harder than we thought setting up, lifting a 150 kilo boat over the camper trailer every time. So and that pack took up of two hours every yeah, time. Yeah, it got a bit old pretty Dread quick. That day. So then the other bonus was as, as we left Brisbane, started coming down, we had the Lanina. Lanina. Lanina wet weather system. So pretty much for six months. We had rain every week. We were just in front of the floods by a couple of weeks. Yeah. Every stop. Yeah, so anyone out there with a camper trailer knows what it's like packing up in the rain. Doing that for over six months, it was fun. But anyway, the camper trailer was gone, so we'd already, before we left Brisbane, booked our barge to Tassie. We'd be warned that it is very hard to get across. It's booked out six months minimum in advance. Yeah. So we booked that in before we left, so we had a sort of Nine a date. Weeks yeah, we had a Tassie to enjoy, so we had a yeah. plan our trip down the east coast to be there in time. Yep. So we did all, all the east coast and ducked out to all those other places you've seen through our YouTube channel and subscribe by the way. Um yeah, so we went to Tassie, sold the camp patroller over in Tassie. Um Probably three weeks before we left for Tassie, we went to the Bendigo Caravan and Camping Show and yeah, fell in love with this. This is where it started. So we went to the show with an intention just to have a look, see what's out there. We were set on an Oz track. Yeah, yeah, we were sitting on Oz track and we liked them. The price was pretty reasonable and then once we stepped foot in one, it, it was not for us. Um, so that, that sort of caravan went for us. Like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> And then we, we just stumbled across another company who they um, great Aussie caravans who we've ended up going with. So I've got a great Aussie now, as you see coming up after all this. Um, that was inspired by Lenina. <laughs> so thank you for that. Oh yeah. So we sold the camp trailer in Tassie because we'd already put our deposit down on this caravan. So then we had another three and a half was it three and a half months? Ordered it in October and picked it up in April. Yeah, so, so we had a fair distance and time in a rooftop tent. And take consideration, the camper trailer sold with our hot water system, diesel everything. generator, at, was it diesel, diesel heater, heater, everything. Our toilet. Toilet, everything. We So once we sold it and we were just in the rooftop, all we had was a bucket to wash up in. We didn't have oh. a shower. We had a hose we'd lay out across the ground to heat up and we had little butane burners which kept blowing out in the wind. And that was five weeks yep. in Tassie. Yep. And then the Four weeks. caravan we started getting progression photos so and now it's getting close. So all right, we better sell the rooftop because I'd come up with another U Butte idea which there'll be another video for that. We now have a mozzie boat loader on the top of our roof. So anyone interested, give Simon a call. He'll look after you. So yeah, mozzie boat loader went on the roof, and so we're back to swag. swag. 
And we decided to camp at Ballarat. Yes, Ballarat. Ballarat is freezing. Would highly recommend camping there in the slag any time. So, in the slag for a bit, and then the caravan arrived. And this thing has just changed our lives. Now we have no date in sight of returning back to Brisbane at this point. Um, yeah. And you know, it's, it's coming close to a year now, and we've only just hit SA. So, doing Australia properly, it's going to take a few years. Oh, yeah. Take your time, enjoy it. Um, we'll duck through now and give you a bit of a glimpse of our van and see what you think. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome guys, this is our Tribal Explorer Alitec 18 foot full off-road van. Thought we'd just give you a walk through. So I've had this van for roughly two months now. Um, worked through all the little bits of problems, which is minuscule by the way. This van is everything we ever thought it would be. So we'll start the front side here. First off, tunnel boot. At the moment, We've got these bunning boxes, eight dollars each from Bunnings, fit perfectly in it. So we have these nearly the entire way through it, and this tunnel boot goes from this side to the other side, access it from either way. So awesome big tunnel boot. We then also have this next compartment. So in here, ignore the mess, sorry about that. In here, keep our drill, our DO35 lock or trailer lock stabiliser, plates, and we also keep our wheel chocks in there as well. Nice little compartment, stores all this stuff for when you're setting up. Right, here we have the storage gas and electric hot water unit. Um, does take, I'd dare say about half an hour to heat it up on gas and a bit more on electric. Um, and the electric side's not as hot as gas. So if you like your really nice hot showers, gas every time. Moving down to our water tanks. So this van has been loaded with water tanks. So we have two 95 litre tanks for showering, washing dishes, anything sort of outside. And also a dedicated 95 litre drinking water so its own pump under the kitchen and runs through its own filter to a tap as well. That's awesome knowing that if you're running out of water, you still need drinking water, it's dedicated, it's isolated, you're always gonna have 95 litres with you. It's very hard to get through 95, by the way. Also on this, we've put two Anderson plugs on the outside of the van to allow for our solar blankets or external solar to be plugged straight into the um, the inner drive, so I'll get to that later and I'll show you the inside what all that's about. You get your 240 mains plug in, so pull up to a van park or generator or anywhere where you got power and you want to plug in and charge those batteries, run the aircon, whatever you want to do, that's where you plug in straight in. Vent for the fridge, so we've opted for the vents for now, haven't gone the hatches because you're going to get the ladder out, height starts playing up a bit, leave it at the vents, gets a bit of dust behind it, clean it out every now and again. Now also on this, I want to show you the checker plating. So on this limited edition full off-road pack, they've now gone 900 mil high checker plate, which is massive. So I'm nearly 170 centimeters high, and this thing's nearly the height of me. So that's incredible. Moving towards the back here, we got um, two bunks in the back here for future. 
So note, all windows on this van are double glazed as well. So it is gonna hold the heat in, it is gonna hold the cool in, whatever you want it to do inside, it does hold it in, it is really good. Another tunnel boot at the back here. So this, this tunnel boot goes all the way to pretty much where the fridge is. Um, store all our tools, recovery gear, hoses, filters, bits and pieces, and yet again, more of these bunning containers. Very easy to throw all this stuff in it, slide it out, put it on the ground, get what you need out, slide it back in, keeps it all sort of organized for us. Now also with this limited edition, we have gone a full aluminium frame. So everything on this van is complete aluminium. The only timber that we have in it is the cabinetry and joinery inside. The rest is complete aluminium. So weight saving, rot free, you're never gonna worry about if a bit of water gets into your frame or silicon starts to fail, where's it gonna start rotting? What am I gonna have to replace? Don't even have to think about it with this van. So that's a big plus. Tires, so we're running the Mickey Thompson Bar Jar Legends. And it is a, so it's a 265 by 75 by 16. These tires are made for the off-road. So couldn't recommend them highly enough. And you know you're getting bang for buck when the caravan company is putting on really good tires underneath your van. Not cheap knockoffs or anything. But knowing that these vans are gonna go completely off-road for the toughest conditions, they put the best stuff on there for you. Also, under this van, we have the LED bug light stripping, which you'll see in some photos coming up. So that runs the complete length of the van, both sides. So this lights up at night the entire campsite. You barely need any other light on. They are incredible. All right, moving our way to the back. Checker plate runs the entire way around. It's all the same. Spare tire and a forearm rear tire holder. Now in this limited edition pack, full of road, it does come with a firebox. So all your timber, all your firewood, you dump it straight in, absolutely unreal. No more getting timber in your boots or in your car, throw it in the back of the van, perfect. On this as well, outdoor shower, not gonna open it up, never used it. Um, Probably will once you start getting up north, but for now, haven't used it. Got a safety day reverse camera, which we've wired into the car as well. That's a must. That thing's been unreal to see who's behind you, who's going to overtake you. Just everything at the back and the light bar as well. So the the front and rear light bars switch white only, but on each side, on the door side and the back and the right hand side. They're white and amber lights up top as well. So if you need to lighten up your whole campground, light it up, you have it there, it's unreal. Also under the back here, you'll see as I'm coming around the side here, I'll get more into it, the departure angle. So on this van, we've gone with a truss chassis. So as you may have seen on Lotuses and, and similar other vans, they now have truss chassis. But there's something a bit different about this one. So come around this side, I'll show you. So on this chassis, it's lifted the van up, so making all the floor level one entire height, which is then allowing more storage inside your van, which is unreal. Also with that, you're getting a heaps better departure angle. You're not too worried about going through shrubbery or stuff coming up and getting the side of your van, you're a lot more protected being up that bit higher. Now with this, instead of having steel welded in through the, the frames here, they've opted for a laser cut aluminium extrusion. So with that, it's as easy as taking off your four Allen key bolts, pops off that extrusion, and you can actually get into there to all your water tanks, wiring, anything like that, you can get in through each of them. So each side has four of them, for your four water tanks. You can get in there, change your fitting, do more plumbing, do whatever you want. You have access to all of that. Now with that as well, Great Aussie has also provided us a checker plate bash plate. 
which runs all the way from the back here in complete length to the front. So stones coming up, hit your pipes, wires, anything coming up, when you're in that outback going through all of it, you're completely protected. That is a massive peace of mind. Not wrapping pool noodles or any of those other little tricks you've seen, you're finished. Bash plates on, you're not having to worry about it. So big thumbs up to Great Aussie for that. Now, coming back on the side here, we've been upgraded to the Fusion stereo system. So that means two speakers outside, two speakers inside. And that stereo system also links up to the TV by Bluetooth. No running extra cables, nothing. It's just all smart, ready to go. So that's been unreal, having a surround sound inside on those cold, rainy days, watching a movie. It's been like in the cinemas, all unreal. Toilet cassette. So we just got the normal Dometic chemical toilet. Happy with that. It's dump points everywhere. Never had the need to to go searching for one. So I don't think the composting is necessary. There's enough chemical dump points. Happy to leave it as that. Moving up the uh, top here, so it's all new decals on these limited editions, um, which look unreal by the way. Around the side, so drop down table, a like massive drop down table. Also have a little neat little light on the top side of them. So at night time, using your bench, that lights it up fairly well. It's really, really convenient. Another 10, out, uh, 10 amp outlet for the side here. So bring an air fryer outside, charge up the car, do whatever you want, inverter on, plug in, you've got 240 volt outside. Been very handy as well. TV brackets, um, antenna, and another 12 volt SIG outlet as well for charging purposes. The door handle as well also illuminates this sort of bluey purple at night. It's pretty cute. Makes it easier to find your way back to camp. As you can see at the top, another white and amber light. So all of these are separate switched inside. So you can decide what light you want on, what color you want it to be on. They don't all come on together. As we're coming our way back through, two steps. We've had to get another step just because this van is so high to get us up in there makes it that lot easier. A double collapse door. So you got solely crim safe, very similar to it. Smash it in, locks it in. Pretty standard across all vans. So nice having that. Another massive window here at the bedroom as well. So that's been quite nice to pop that open and you've got a nice view like we have the Flinders Ranges. Been unreal, lets that fresh air in and make sure you keep that heater on. Moving to the front here. Gas bayonet fitting over here and an outdoor tub as well. So gas bayonet, we hook that up to the Weber Q in here. So you just pull the Weber out. Weber comes out in the slide. Gas bayonet over to it. Do your roast, do your cooking. It's all there. Barely have to take this off. That's been great. Now with that as well, that tunnel boot. You can see this side we've got a few rods, brooms, some tables, just bits and pieces. It does also have a light inside for the night if you want to see what you're doing in there. That's been great. It does have four stabiliser legs the entire way around, um, which has been easy. We've never had a real drama with levelling out anywhere. Um, the suspension, we'll come back to that. I'll have to get under and show you. So on this toolbox, it does have a divide. So as you just saw then, it has got a roller here for the baby cue the exact same on the other side for a generator. Quite recently we've actually got rid of our generator so it's no longer needed and as I'll show you inside very shortly. So each side of the toolbox, jerry can holder, one for diesel, that's pretty much a backup for the ute. The other side we have an unleaded which we use for our boat. Going on those longer trips 
we fill that up and that's a backup for the boat. Now note as well, these jerry can ho holders are completely welded in. They're not spot welded, completely welded in. So if you have these full going on corrugation, I would not be worried about cracking welds. They are solid. Right across to the front. Front, we have a stone guard, DO35, a seven pin, Anderson, and the safety Dave cable as well. Breakaway as well, sorry. Now we have got the standard jockey wheel that will be going shortly. It is a pain in the ass setting this jockey wheel up. So we will be changing that. Two nine kilo gas bottles, which is ample. The only gas appliances we use is really the hot water. Gas cooking inside if it's a bit cold or it's raining or the weather's miserable. Um, and the baby weather gear. So staying guard the entire way through. Note the A-frame is a six inch A-frame and it has been extended. That comes standard with these limited editions. So maneuvering, reversing, anything off-road, this thing has been unreal. A lot easier than the previous camper trailer we used to have. So at the front here as well, as you can see, another floodlight at the top here, another spotlight, sorry. So that's lights up everything. We're working our way through the front here. You can see underneath how much clearance we're getting. And you see there's a mud flap the entire way across again to stop the stones coming up or anything like that. It's another addition of protection that Great Aussie has come up with and decided to put on these limited edition models. So every bit of protection you can get in your van is going to save you. You're going to be happy with it. And just makes traveling a bit more peace of mind knowing that towing around vans like this, you're not going to do any damage to it. Now on the roof, we have four 170 watt solar panels, which put in roughly about 35 to 40 amps on a good day. We have the 360 degree antenna, so no more winding up. Just plug into the booster, into your TV, off you go. Picks up TV nearly everywhere. We have the Ibis 4 Dometic aircon, which the Ibis 4, we can run that off the inverter on heating or cooling. Once it's cycled in, it's only drawing about 10 to 15 amps. That's bugger all. So it saved us from putting in a diesel heater with the lithium setup that we have. And note as well, running an air con, it cools the van down or heats the van up, just like that. It's pretty bloody quick. So that's bad unreal. Also have three skylights across the top or vents. So they come with the shutters or fly screens across them. And then an additional two with extraction fans in the shower and on the toilet. So they've been awesome as well. And note all of those skylights have lights built into them, which has been awesome. Now we have not gone for a, scuff, uh, for a dust suppression system on this van. We've opted the old school way and that's a scuff event. So far, so good. As you can see, we're in red dirt country and we have not got any dust in there yet. So I, I believe in doing the scuff event, saving weight, it's cheaper, it's gonna work. It's been proven, used it back on the old caravans and it worked, why change something that works? But we'll get back to you on it, we'll see how we go. Now also, underneath this van is rated recovery points. So if you get yourself into a bit of mischief, knowing that you have these road recovery points to get you out of trouble, unreal. And this is both sides of the van. Also underneath here, so our suspension, we've got drum brakes and we've gone with the Tough Rider suspension. So this suspension kit allowed us on a single axle to go to three tonne, which is unreal. And our tear weight when we weighed it in, we came in at 2,484 kilos. So it gives us a bit over 500 kilos to put into this van and be legal, which is unbelievable. Yep. All right, so the awning as well, nearly goes the complete length of the van. So nice and big. I can put this thing up by myself in about three minutes. 
It has a manual awning, but it's super easy to put up. And those big downpours, it has saved us a lot. My biggest trick to it would be always have it on a slight angle, allow it for that rain to come in. Strap it down every time, even if you know there's not going to be much around, peace of mind, and put some anti flaps on it. Then you know, you're sorted. Righto, yeah, it guys. All right, welcome inside to the Great Aussie Tribal Explorer 18 foot. Let's show you how much they jam in here. In the bathroom, we have switched the layout around. Originally, the shower was here with a tiny sink and the toilet. Um, a lot better. It is squeezy, but we make it work. With the bigger bench top, we are able to get the big mirror, which does light up the bathroom pretty cool. Plenty of storage, overheads, two of, drawers and a couple of cupboards. We do have one each side at the moment, which is great. Flat pack included in the limited edition for 2023. Few fusion locks, got the soap dispenser, towel rail and into the shower. We also have the black pack continued and another fusion lock. The vents on our bathroom also have lights, which are very handy. Come on out here. We originally did have the washing machine located above the toilet, but we wanted the extra window. So we have put the three and a half kilo mini destination RV located at the bottom here, which I guess is a lot better for weight distribution. Still then have the drawer and cupboards, mind the mess. Originally did have hanging, but Handy Cal has installed shelves on both sides, which is awesome. In the bunks, we opted for two. Um, they do come with three, but going with the two, we do get the under bed storage, which Cal spoke about before which is external access as well, which is very handy. Both the bunks come with the power points, lights, fans, and the pockets, which I find handy. I hand store all the saucepan lids and microwave glass tray in. Both got their own windows. Also got the roof hatch, which has been flipped, which is great with the power for the lights on the bunk side. Um, two towel rails located in here, which is amazing. Both Constantina doors just saves on some space. We have gone with, I think it comes standard these days, 224 litre compressor fridge freezer. Um, opted, I guess, for it on the floor and having storage above. I find is a lot better than trying to get on your knees all the time, get stuff out. It's pretty full at the moment. Oh, lucky the food is full. Um, kitchen, just kept the standard grill and oven with the cooktop, the electric hot plate. Um, along here, this one here, it's got all our gadgets in it. Callum's domain, not mine. Um, at first, this was a tiny little nook. We're like, what are we going to do with it? But got the tiny little DeLonghi coffee machine that fits in there perfectly for travel. Um, obviously got the black pack, which is beautiful. And our tap does have the filtered water at the back. Um, which is double filtered. We'll show you that in a second. Another Fusion Lock dishwashing dispenser. And thanks to my pop, I've had this one for a while, but it works as an extra bit of bench space, drying rack, I just put a tea towel on it. And yeah, obviously limited space here. But the waterfall bench top is a part of the limited edition pack. Originally, our van did come with the layout flipped so we have opted to change that cooking and talking out the window is a lot nicer than having the lounge here 
Doing that, we then had to downsize our drawer and cupboard space here. So if anyone's got any hot tips on how to organize a tiny little drawer, that would be great because it's a mess at the moment. Um, got another into the other side, another pocket, got all the lights along this side of the van or with the USB power points as well. Lots of storage up here. If I can sneak past. Have gone to Kmart and got these little white racks which have just sort of doubled our storage I guess you could say in there which is awesome. Um, under the lounge, Callum will show you that in a minute because I know not much about it. I have gone with the east-west bed. Obviously being a smaller van, that's what we had to do. It's a pain making it, but we deal. Plenty of overhead storage. Obviously with the new shape that Great Aussie have gone with outside, we get... I'm not going to... I'll open it. It's a mess get a lot bigger space through here and that cupboard does run right through to the end and just a few little more bits of storage in there um, also on the other side of the bed here we do have another pocket which is very handy I keep the iPad and the TV remote in there just keeps it out of the way Callum's little storage hack over here again installed more shelving rather than hanging space. Um, little pocket in under here. At the moment it's full of junk and I'm yet to clean it out, but it does have, what's it got? The PowerPoint, two USBs and a cigarette point. I think that's it. Great Aussie have also installed a bed and bath light, which you don't have to get out of bed. You just switch lights on and off, which is really good. Um, big windows, Cal spoke of before. Got our fusion lock with our sage and twine hat holder, which is great, keeps them out of the way. TV, stocky standard, comes with the van. That's the booster that's connected to our little 360 antenna, 12 volt, and two 240 volt power points. Another pocket above the door, which as you can see is our stubby holder and torch, just keeps them handy going in and out. Comes with the blind, which is great for privacy, just it gets a bit noisy in the wind. Um, right, one more story. Oh no, we've still got more in here. Do have two more little compartments down here. This one we've just got as, oh, just all our electrical cords, phone chargers, keep them all in one spot and as much as Callum hates it that's my toy game cupboard handball we've got the PlayStation remote in there so we can play games <laughs> um, under the bed pretty handy spot you can also access it if you lift up the mattress um, we just keep the vacuum cleaner in there and we do have more of those Bunnings tubs. One of them's full of our shoes and the other one's just full of excessive um, bulk dry goods that we have for when we need it. And come over here to the kitchen. I've already talked. Um, this one, obviously, yeah, just being that bit shorter space, but the full depth of the bench. This is Callum's favorite looks forward to it mm, every morning. Pods. Mm. Massive big container full of them. And in this one here, we've installed the paper towel holder. All our pots and pans, they're all just got a detachable handle so it's easy to store. Another shelf from Kmart underneath and it's got the rice cooker and the air fryer. Also a water pump in under there which is for the drinking water. And in under here is all our other water gadgets and onions and potatoes. Um, also in the limited edition pack, got these awesome lights. Shut a few little blinds in here. 
don't know if you can see it. It's a overhead cupboards and in the kitchen also along the bottom, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, also in the limited edition pack, we've got these little remote control, um, one to four bedroom, kitchen and bathroom and four, five, six are all the outdoor lights. Um, so it's pretty handy if I've got that in my chair sitting around the fire and got to walk to camp or something, you just switch it on before you get there. You don't have to get in the van in the dark. Um, bathroom and kitchen both have these cool little touch sensor lights, which I do prefer to cook with and use all the time just because they're less on power than using overheads and things like that. Range hood on, light. Make sure you always cook them with it on. We have had the smoke alarm go off a few times when we've forgotten about it. Um, and I guess I'll pass it back to Cal. He'll talk a bit about the power here, the inverter and the battery system. Right guys, I'll give you a run through the electrical setup that we have running in this van. So this setup allows us to be completely off grid. I think the entire time we've owned it, we've probably plugged into power once. Um, that was just to give the batteries a proper 240 volt charge before we took off knowing we're staying away from caravan parks, 240 volt, and trying to live off, off grid as much as possible. So let's get into it. So the brains of the system, we have an RV80 plus board down the bottom here. We've got a 40 amp ePower Pro charger, a DC to DC charger, and we have three 200 amp hour lithium batteries from Hannah Drive, which has been, so 600 amps in total, plenty of power has been ample for us. Also with that, we got the 2600 watt inverter. Um, so with that, it's got the smart input of switching. <coughs> so it allows you to switch on the inverter from the remote switch and all your power points become live as well with your aircon, everything else, everything becomes live without doing any of those leads from the outside that you've seen on, on the other style of inverters. Also with that, the little lights that Meg was talking about above the bed. So there's two above the bed, two above the lounge and one in each of the bunks. It's a blue light, white light. If you hold the button in, it does dim down as well. A bit of mood lighting at night as well. So we have turn that one on and point it down for me. Yeah. We have done some modifying in this electrical setup. So I think it was within the first week of us getting it. I've changed the solar regulator out from away from getting to the DC DC charger because I want an optimal power going into this van as we're driving along. So I've got a Victron uh, 50 amp MPPT charger in here. So it allows me to put in all the solar on the roof. We'll be charging the battery as well as the 40 amps from the DC charger as we're driving along. So realistically, you're getting about 80 to 90 amps going into it as you're driving, which is pretty bloody unreal. Now on great Aussie's behalf, this system was meant to come with a sign marine display, but it hasn't. It's come with an E-Pro gauge. Max from Great, Oz, from Great Aussie at Warranty has sent us out a Solomon display for us to get installed into it. So on their warranty wise, Great Aussie have been unreal. Any little dramas we've had, which is, and we had a water tank leak, it was just one of the taps was leaking. Um, we were missing one of the tower rails and toilet roll holder toilet roll holder there wasn't an awful on oh, the water tanks were all linked together they weren't separate which they were meant to be and the drinking water yeah water. yeah um, they got all of that sorted in one day finished and we haven't had a drama with it ever since so it has been unreal so i'll show you at the front here so these are just more switches so all, all your pumps all your floodlights your water gauges for all your four tanks, more uh, more light switches, and this is the Enerdrive E-Pro gauge, which will be going very shortly to a sign marine display. So we'll be able to get, see a lot more accurately what we're using, what we're drawing, 
what each component is drawing as well. Even though we have 600 amp hours, it's just nice to have that display there as well. Um, now with that, that lithium setup, with that inverter, we run the coffee machine every morning, don't even have to think about it. And on those super cold nights, we run the aircon on heating. So on one of my later stories, I put the aircon on for I think it was two and a half hours and we dropped all of 13% in two and a half hours. So super efficient. They do draw a lot of power on startup. You're looking above 100 amps. But once it gets to temperature, it cycles. It's going on and off and it's using minimal power. So once we got it to cycle, it was only using about 10 to 15 amps, which you could leave on nearly all night on with this lithium setup. So it has been unreal. I hope you guys like it and yeah, shoot us any questions.